Scorpio, the scorpion, eagle, or gray lizard. October 24th through November 22nd. How to recognize Scorpio. The question is, which is to be master? That's all. An encyclopedia describes a scorpion as a nocturnal arachnid that attacks and paralyzes its prey with a poison injected by the long curved tail used for both defense and destruction. Its sting is sometimes fatal. People often draw back visibly when someone says he or she was born in November, murmuring, oh, you're a Scorpio, either in frank fear or in awe and respect. Sometimes there's also a giggle that obviously refers to the legendary Scorpio passion. Scorpios are fed up with these reactions to their sun sign, and who could blame them? But they are ruthless and dangerous, right? Wrong. It depends. First, you'd better learn how to recognize the sign. In self-defense, perhaps, or because you seek a really superior human being. Scorpio likes to travel incognito. Thanks to his well-controlled nature, he usually succeeds, but there are a couple of shortcuts which will make it easier to penetrate his disguise at midnight or at noon. Look at the eyes. They can be green, blue, brown, or black, but they'll be piercing with hypnotic intensity. Most people feel nervous and ill at ease under Scorpio's steady gaze. You'll have to break the spell and look away first. He'll outstare you every time. It's a foolproof identification of the Pluto personality. Scorpio eyes bore deeply into you, mercilessly, as if they're penetrating your very soul. They are. Next, listen to him speak. The tone can be velvety soft, husky, or sharply cutting. The speech slow and measured or clipped and staccato. But what he says will never be self-effacing. Scorpio has total ego. He knows what he is and he knows what he is not and nothing anyone else thinks will change his knowledge. Insults roll right off his back and compliments don't move him a fraction of an inch. He needs no one to tell him his vices or his virtues. At best, he'll calmly agree with your appraisal. At worst, he'll suspect your motives. The next time you're with a group of people, bring up the discussion of sun signs. Mention that with a little practice, it's fairly easy to recognize them. When someone fastens you with a hypnotic gaze and states with supreme confidence, you can't guess what I am. Say firmly, you're a Scorpio. It may be the first time he's ever blinked, but his stare will waver only for an instant, and he'll quickly regain the cool composure he exhibited before you exposed his careful disguise. If you ever come across a chattering Scorpio whose eyes wander, chalk him up as an astrological exception, as rare as the dodo bird. There are some November people with heavenly or heavy planetary influences of restlessness in their naiveties, but you're trying to learn to recognize the typical Scorpio. You'll find very few of the nervous kind. The nature can be modified by other natal influences, but only slightly. Most Pluto people have powerful psyches. The feature are features are noticeable, noticeably heavy or sharp and clearly drawn, and the nose is quite prominent, sometimes beak-shaped. Ordinar ordinarily, the complexion is very pale, almost translucent, and the brows are heavy and knit together over the bridge of the nose. There's a crackling, eclectic vitality about the very presence of a Scorpio that gives him away. As quiet as he tries to be, such a vital force can't be hidden completely. The males will have a heavy growth of hair on the arms and legs, often with a reddish cast. Most Scorpios have darkish hair and eyes, but don't overlook the frosty blonde types, of which Grace Kelly and Billy Graham are excellent examples. Frosty on the outside, that is. The poised surface calm of Pluto character is carefully designed to hide the boiling inner nature. Such mastery of the personality has to be envied. No matter how his emotions are stirred, you'll rarely see them reflected on Scorpio's frozen, immobile face. These people proudly and consciously practice a blank expression. They command their features to remain firm, and their features obey. They wouldn't dare disobey a Scorpio. 
You'll seldom see a Scorpio give himself away by blushing or flushing, frowning or grinning. Smiles are rare, but genuine. The body follows the same orders as the face. There will rarely be any jumping, sudden starts or nervous mannerisms. He'll never flinch with embarrassment or swell up with pride. Reaction is always kept at a bare minimum because Scorpio's art is to probe your nature and motives relentlessly while remaining inscrutable himself, and he's an expert at it. It's important to remember that there is a particular type of Scorpio who moves and speaks rather quickly and appears to have an open, friendly manner. Look deeply into his eyes and really think about some of his past actions, his true behavior. He's really just playing a game with all of his happy talk. Inside, he's as tough and determined as the more typical poised Pluto people. Perhaps he's even a shade more dangerous because his disguise is better and he fools you more easily. Start treating him as Charlie Nice Guy, who's completely harmless, and you may be courting some trouble. Be on guard with all Scorpios. I don't mean they're wicked. They're just not soft or naive. Some Scorpios, realizing that their eyes expose their inner intensity, wear sunglasses frequently, even at night. Remark to a Scorpio that he has a great talent, which will someday be recognized, and he smoothly, casually replies, yes, I know. Ask him if he'll do you a favor, and the answer will equally be equally simple. Yes, of course I will, or no, I can't do that. If you're sensitive, don't ask his opinion or advice. You'll get the naked, brutal truth. You ask him, he'll tell you. <laughs> Scorpio will not pay a false compliment to gain a point or win an ally. It's beneath him to flatter. When he says something nice to you, treasure it. You can be sure it's sincere and unvarnished. If he says you have a good voice, stop singing in the shower and grab a microphone. If he says you have a great voice, you can safely audition for the Met. He may even effortlessly move a few mountains out of your way to help you along. Don't believe everything you hear about Scorpio's selfishness. Instead, listen to some of the grateful people who have been on the receiving end of his wise counsel and generosity. Scorpio naturally attracts either fiercely loyal and dedicated admirers or envious and spiteful enemies, but even the latter give him grudging respect, and you'll notice they're, they're careful not to challenge him openly. The examples of the few who did are vivid and painful reminders that caution is required in an attack against Scorpio and his planet, Pluto. Remember that Pluto rules nuclear power. Yes, oh, yet, there's a haunting sweetness about these people, and often a gentle sympathy with the sick or despairing. Scorpio's touch can be cool and tender as well as hot. His sun position gives him several paths to follow. He can imitate the nocturnal scorpion, who will sting others and even sting himself to death for the pure pleasure of stinging, or he can imitate the glorious soaring path of his symbolic eagle, who rises above earthly limitations and uses his strength wisely and justly. Great generals like MacArthur, presidents like Theodore Roosevelt, and scientists like Madame Curie and Jonas Salk are eagles. More United States presidents have been born under this sign than any other. As for the nocturnal scorpions, you may have been stung by a few yourself. Ancient astrology refers to them as serpents. It's not hard to guess which category the ones you meet belong to. A few Pluto people fall somewhere between the eagle and the singing, stinging scorpion, victims of their own black magic. These are the gray lizards. With them, supreme self-sacrifice becomes neurotic concern about the self, and psychic abilities become fearful apprehensions of the lurking evils which may strike at any moment. Forceful courage twists itself around, and instead of seeking the ruthless revenge of the stinger, scorpions, or rising above such bitterness like the eagles, they bitterly withdraw entangled hatreds at each minor injury, hoping fate will punish their enemies, almost unconsciously willing destruction without direct action. The gray lizards fail to draw on the power of Pluto in their natures, power that could lift them high above all the unfortunate circumstances that surround them. In the very teeth of tragedy, this awesome inner strength could give them a new life in the sunlight, but they seek the dark shadows and lie dormant, a pathetic waste of the brilliant potential of their birthright. Still, 
scorpio can never slide deep enough into the slime of bitter depression to completely lose the power of pluto it's never too late for the gray lizard to transform himself into an eagle that kind of deep magic belongs exclusively to every person born under the sun sign of scorpio they all all they need to do is call on it typical eagles have no fear and battle will lead their men into the very face of death without a tremor even the average Pluto man or woman bravely faces anything from physical pain and poverty to ridicule and failure with a proud contempt and complete confidence in an inner ability to overcome any blow. Scorpio is intensely loyal to friends. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Some of them do this literally for friends, relatives, or loved ones in battle or in a civilian crisis. The Scorpio soldier leaps instantly, instinctively, to brave the bullets and drag his buddy to safety. The Scorpio fireman gives his life to rescue the child in the burning building. Sometimes, it seems Pluto people unconsciously seek violence deliberately as a challenge to their strength. Scorpio never forgets a gift or a kindness, and it's richly rewarded. Conversely, he also remembers an injury or an injustice, but there are difficult ways of reacting. The eagle will crush the enemy, so the enemy learns never to hurt him again, wins the fight, and leaves the defeat, defeated to go his own way. The deadly nocturnal scorpion will sting first, then plan destruction, then sting again. He's not content with merely evening the score. He must totally destroy the enemy, or at least top him. The typical scorpion stinger will lie awake, nights figuring out how to get even. If a neighbor deliberately scrapes his fender, he'll scrape two fenders on the neighbor's on the neighbor car, neighbor's car the next day, and maybe drive over his carefully pruned hedges for good measure. These scorpions are seldom content with forcing the shoe on the other foot to teach enemies how it feels. They glue. They glue on with cement. However, with the gray lizards, Pluto revenge takes the form of bitterness held inside for years, which inevitably causes deep melancholy or actual lingering physical illness. Seething Scorpio resentment turned inward and never expressed poisons with deadly certainty. Turned outward, it can create guilt because the stinger scorpion is ashamed to harm the defenseless when all is said and done. Therefore, it should be turned neither way, inward nor outward. It should be conquered by looking up and forgetting, like the eagle, never by looking back in anger and retaliation. The Scorpio health picture is typical of his nature. He can destroy his body with excesses, melancholy, or hard work, but he can also build it back at will from a critical illness. Pluto's power is that strong. Scorpios are seldom sick, but when they are, it's usually serious. A long rest and a change of attitude with peaceful acceptance, replacing burning resentment, are the best cures. They can't let well enough alone, and of course, they know more than the doctor and all the nurses. The chief areas of attack for germs and accidents are the reproductive organs, the nose, the throat, the heart, the spine, back, circulatory, circulatory, circ Ulatory system, legs, and ankles. Varicose veins and accidents in sports are common. They should avoid fire, explosives, noxious fumes, and radiation. Yet, you'll find lots of them seek occupations that flirt with danger along these very lines. Sometimes, they have chronic nosebleeds or surgeries performed on the nose for some reason. Scorpio is deeply interested in religion, intensely curious about all phases of life and death, passionately concerned with sex and violently drawn by a desire to reform. Yet, he is also a heretic, dedicated to ties of family and love, and gently protective of children and weaker souls. He can be a saint or a sinner. He can experiment with the darkest mysteries his side of Hades, or he can scathingly revile sin and decadence. Whether he emotes from a pulpit at a business meeting or from a stage, this hypnotic appeal pierces through his audience literally transfixing or transfiguring them. It's really rather frightening. Even if the Scorpio has temporarily allowed bitterness, drink, or melancholy to drag him into the Bowery, you can bet your old copy of Dante's Inferno that the other 
bums will clear a path when they see him coming. He is fiercely possessive of what he believes to be his, including success, but his ambition is never obvious. He quietly waits for the chance to move ahead, all the while he serves, knowing he is qualified for the position above him. He takes control slowly, but very surely. Scorpio can do just about anything he wants to, if he really wants it. It's most definitely no longer a dream. The dark, magical, and mysterious power of Pluto turns desire into reality with cool, careful, fixed intent. Although a morbid desire to know the worst of sick and depraved humanity can create a gray lizard who dabbles in drugs and cruelty, he can reverse the path of a life of medicine where drastic treatments with the same symbols have a deep fascination for him. Although many of the rumored sadistic surgeons are Scorpios, it's equally true that many of the finest medical men in the entire world are inspired by Pluto to heal both the mind and the body, diagnosing and treating with strange, inscrutable knowledge. Scorpio was born knowing the secrets of life and death, and with the ability to conquer both if he chooses, but astrology constantly advises him that he must know that he knows. The ancient mysteries fascinate his brilliant mind, out of his powerful empathy with human nature grows the outstanding detective, the composer of great musical works, literature of depth and permanence, or the actor who projects with unusual dramatic intensity. Sometimes he lives alone near the sea, as strong and as silent as the tides. Sometimes he faces the public, wearing a mask of calm reserve and control to hide his intense desire to win. He can be a politician or a television star, an undertaker or a bartender, but he'll manage to top all of his competitors and he'll do it so effortlessly. It will seem like an act of fate rather than his own powerful will. One of the strangest patterns in astrology is the death of a relative in the family within either a year before or the year after the birth of a Scorpio. And when a Scorpio dies, there will be a birth in the family within the year before or the year after. It happens at least 95% of the time. Pluto's symbol is the triumphant phoenix rising from its own smoldering ashes, and Scorpio personifies the resurrection from the grave. Both the gray lizards and the stinging scorpions can become proud eagles without ever revealing the secret of their sorcery. No use to ask Scorpio, will never tell. But he knows the eternal truth of the circle contained in the symbolic zero. November's thistle is dangerous, yet it grows entwined with the heavy languid beauty of the Scorpio honeysuckle. Have you ever inhaled that sweet, overwhelming fragrance on a midsummer's night? Then you will know why there are those who brave the thistles to seek the gentleness of Scorpio exquisite gentleness. The explosive passion of Pluto has the rich dark red wine color of the bloodstone, but Scorpio's steel is tempered in a furnace of unbearable heat until it emerges cool, satiny smooth, and strong enough to control the nine spiritual fires of Scorpio's wisdom.